Welcome back to the Lib Wizard Quiz Workshop. At this point, we have completed three of our workshop goals by creating a new quiz and constructing all of the corresponding options for headers, look and feel, and quiz submissions. We've also reviewed two quizzes currently in use. The two remaining goals include managing the WorkPeg content area, including the welcome page and certificate of completion, in creating a quiz with true-false questions and learner feedback. The last two goals will bring us closer to our stated workshop outcome. If you logged out during the break, log back in to your LibApps account. Select LibWizard. Note that on the LibWizard dashboard, there is a section detailing recent activity. Most likely, you'll be able to access your newly created quiz here. If not, return to the main quizzes dashboard and locate your project. A shortcut to My LibWizard Example Quiz is provided. Our focus now is the work pad, or the content area. It has three distinct sections. The welcome screen, an introductory page seen before learners access the quiz, the fields area where quiz content resides, and the thank you screen, along with certificate of completion. We're going to use all three content areas to build a quiz. A welcome screen is not required. If you want learners to go directly to the quiz, simply leave it empty. I'm going to include a welcome screen with goals and outcomes for this quiz. Select Add a Welcome Screen. Text for the welcome screen will be entered here. It can be styled using the text editor. If you have written instructions elsewhere, direction for pasting text and using spell check are provided. I have text prepared for the welcome screen. To style the content, I'll change the font to Verdana to match the quiz header font selected at Setup. I'm going to format the quiz title. And adjust the text size. Next, I'm going to include bullets to feature the quiz goals. The last thing I'm going to do is place a horizontal line between the quiz title and quiz contents. Before leaving the welcome screen, note that you can customize the Begin button. I'm leaving it to say Begin. Click Save and Continue. You can see that the welcome screen text has been added. Now there's an option to edit the screen and the begin button is visible at the bottom of the content fields area. At this point I'd like to preview what has been done. However, field value is required first. Since the first thing I want to add to my quiz is directions, I can add a text block as a placeholder to be able to preview. Select Text Block, drag it into the field, and Save. This time when you select Preview, you are able to see your welcome screen information. Close the preview to continue. Note that after dragging the text block field and not adding anything to it, resulted in a warning label, stating that the field does not have a question text. We'll begin by filling this field. Select Edit Field to continue. Start by adding a short name. This will help you identify the field later. The text field functions in the same manner as the welcome page. Paste or type in the directions, 
and take time to style your text. When you're finished, select Save. Notice that the warning sign is gone and you can preview again. When you select Begin, you will see your directions. Close the tab to return to the work pad. Before adding a question, I would like to place a divider between the directions and the quiz content. To do this, drag the line separator below directions and save. To add a true-false question, choose radios from the multiple choice field menu and drag it to below the line separator. The edit radio field box automatically opens and you can view display properties, answer properties, and advanced customization. We're going to start with display properties. To start, we're going to enter a short name. This will help identify the questions in the work pad and display the quiz in submission reports. My first question is about quiz display dates. I will name it Q1 display dates. Next, enter your question text. Scroll down to determine the number of choices. We will need two for true and false. After adding true and false, remove the check mark to set one of them as a default choice. Since we only need two, you can delete radio number three. At any time, you can return to the question and add a row. Next, choose a display mode, sorting choice options, and if you're using other, you would enter it here. Determine if your question is going to be required, these are, or if you need to hide it for some reason. When you're finished, click Save. At this point, the question is available. It is required, but we didn't answer it. Return to Edit Field and select Answer Properties. First, select whether the answer to your question is true or false. Indicate if a correct answer is required, if you're going to display individual feedback, or if you're going to display correct and wrong messages. To display those, select the check mark and enter what the user will see with the correct answer. Then answer the feedback that they'll get with an incorrect answer and save your selection. Finally, with advanced customization, this is optional. As with CSS to style quizzes, I would recommend further training before use. Return to Display Properties and Save. If you'd like, preview your quiz again. Learners will see the welcome screen, select Begin, see the directions, the first question, note that it is required, and they can choose true or false. Close the tab and return to your quiz. Enter your next true or false questions before moving to the thank you screen. We're going to create a simple thank you screen and a certificate of completion. Here you can include the message, allow users an option to email their results, display their grade, display correct answers in a table, display a button at the end allowing them to retake the quiz, and change the context for retake the quiz. I'm going to enter a simple thank you statement, select the option to display their grade, number of questions, and keep the button so they can retake the quiz. Next we'll develop our certificate. Click Certificate of Completion and enable the function. A default certificate displays with the example provided below. Both standard and field tokens are presented to use within the certificate. We'll use these tokens to customize your certificate. Don't worry, it's a lot simpler than it sounds. 
For instance, the word quiz is displayed twice in the preview. LibWizard example quiz quiz. I can delete the word quiz and immediately see the results. Next I want to remove where it says through Ashland University. Up at the top, select next to through, remove the word, and the token for library name. I can further style the certificate by changing the font. And adjusting where the text displays. I can even choose to change the title color and even make it bold. Click Save to continue. Let's preview the final quiz. Select Preview, view the example page, and welcome. Begin, required. Select true and false. And now I notice this says review. We made this selection when setting up the quiz to start, and I've decided this isn't needed. So to change it, return to quiz option, choose submission behavior, and uncheck display a review page. Hit save. Preview again. Hit Submit, and now we see the feedback responses. However, we really don't need the Back button. Return to your quiz, choose Quiz Options, and remove the Back button. Save. We'll do a final preview. This time we want to look at the Preview Mode menu. When previewing, you can choose to ignore required, have quick access to the shared URL and embed code, preview your quiz in desktop view, tablet view, and mobile view, and explore the preview mode report. Any quizzes submitting during the preview will show here. Notice that it's kept separate from the live report. Select the tab to return. Begin your quiz. Select answers. Submit. View the certificate. Close the tab to return to the menu. Select dashboard to return to the main LibWizard menu. This concludes our introduction to LibWizard quizzes. Please feel free to contact me with any questions, and stay tuned for more LibWizard tutorials.